Welcome back to another video in the MVVM Jetpack Compose course that I'm putting on YouTube, also my website, and this is a free course for those of you who are watching for the first time. In this video, well actually let's first talk about the previous video. In the previous video, we set up Hilt for dependency injection. I showed you how to get started with Hilt. I didn't describe it in a lot of detail, but I have a free Hilt course on YouTube, and I pointed you there if you want to get more information. So again, if you still are not really sure about Hilt, it looks a little difficult. We will be doing more Hilt stuff still in this video, so there's still more to come. But if you want more information, again, there's a free course on YouTube. I'll put a card up here just so you can go and uh, get a quick link to that. So in this video now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up view model, set up our first view model, and we're going to set up uh, Hilt with this view model. And I'm really impressed with Hilt. Again, they really just make dependency injection simple. They make using view models really simple because I, I think that uh, this is probably the easiest way regarding view models uh, when it comes to dependency injection or even just using view models in general. If you're doing constructor injection with view models in the past, it was quite difficult. Even in the simplest way, it was still quite difficult if you wanted to pass anything to a view model back in the day, I guess, which wasn't really that long ago, probably like, uh, you know, midway through this year, when you did it with dagger, you had to do this sort of uh, well, what it was a map map multi binding is what it was called to um, map the view models and the to the specific view model factory and then provide that through dagger. It was a very, um, very complicated process that was not easy to grasp. Well, now I'm happy to say that with hilt, it is much, much easier. It's really a matter of adding one annotation and you're, you're pretty much ready to go. So let's go into Android Studio. Let's set up our first view model and let's do some dependency injection into that view model. So we do actually need one more dependency. I know I said we were gonna go into Android Studio, but to do this sort of easy method of dependency injection with view models and provide view models, instantiate view models and fragments and activities, we need a, another library or another dependency that uh, the Android developers at Google have built for us. So go to this URL, developer.android.com, training, dependency injection, Hilt Jetpack, and scroll down and get this dependency. So we want these two right here since we're using Kotlin, so I'm going to copy those. Now let's go to Android Studio and go to the build.gradle app file. And I forgot to crank up my font size, so let me just increase that. So let's go to let's go to like 48. I think we did 47 last time. And uh, we'll try 48 today. Very, very big font size. So now go down below our first Hilt dependency here and paste that in. Change this to double quotations so that I can uh, add a, a variable to this. So just do, oh, I need to actually create that variable. So I'll cut that out. I'll do define Hilt uh, life cycle, I guess I'll call this one. And there's that Hilt lifecycle version, and then just do dollar sign, pass that as a variable. Now this one also, I want to add double quotation, so do the same thing, let's delete the version, and do Hilt lifecycle for this one also. So those are the two dependencies, one is for, uh, one's for annotations, and one is for the actual dependency itself. So let's go to, uh, well, let's change up our package structure actually right now, because right now we, we everything for our UI is kind of all just in one section. This right here, base application, uh, main activity, recipe fragment, recipe list fragment. Let's create a new package for our UI stuff. So I, I wanna try and follow a like clean architecture-ish sort of patterns. So I'm gonna right click on the main package directory and call this presentation. Now again, I'm not following clean architecture sort of strictly in this since it's a beginner course, but I'm showing you a little bit, a little glimpses of what it would look like. So I wanna use the same sort of naming conventions. So let's go into presentation. We'll go into, we're gonna create a new package named UI. And then inside of UI, I'm gonna create two new packages, one called recipe, and then right click again, new package, and one called recipe underscore list. So these will be the two fragments for our application. So I'm going to move main activity into presentation. So just move that into the top level presentation package. And then I'm gonna also move base application into the top level presentation package. Now inside of presentation, inside of UI, now I'm gonna move these fragments. So recipe fragment will obviously go inside of the recipe package. And then recipe list fragment will go into the recipe list package. So now we're ready to go. Now we're ready to build our view model. Let me actually close all of these because we don't need all that stuff open. So let's go into recipe list, right click, go to new Kotlin file and call this recipe list view model. So we're not gonna be sharing any view models in this course. We're gonna be building a separate view model for the recipe fragment and a separate view model for the recipe list fragment. 
So I'll minimize this and we're ready to build our first view model. So we need a constructor because we know we are going to be injecting things into this view model. So I'll just kind of leave that blank. Of course, we need to extend the view model class. So I'll extend that. So now how do we tell Hilt or Dagger um, how, how to set this up? Like how do we tell it, hey, we want to inject things into it? Because in our recipe list fragment, for example, we are going to add an Android entry point annotation to the top of this, just like we did in the activity. So if you go to the activity, remember we have this Android entry point annotation telling it, telling, telling the project, hey, we're going to be injecting things into main activity. Also, um, just note that if you have fragments and those fragments are hosted in an activity like we have, you always have to have an activity, uh, the fragments hosted by a particular activity. If you're going to be marking a fragment with Android entry point, the host activity also must have Android entry point. So like, for example, oh, I don't know why this coroutine scope thing was there. I think I was testing something earlier. Let me just delete that. Um, so like, for example, we're not going to be injecting anything into the activity. I'm actually going to delete those, get rid of that stuff. But even if we're not injecting anything into the activity, because we are marking the fragment with Android entry point, Android entry point also must be on the activity. So just keep that in mind. So now I can close main activity. We've marked this as Android entry point. Let's also go into recipe fragment and mark this with Android entry point since we're just doing that just to get it done in case we forget later. So Android entry point is on recipe list fragment and also recipe fragment. Okay, so Android entry point, we know that Android entry point is used when we want to tell uh, Hilt that we're gonna be injecting things into this class. But what about a view model? Would we mark this with Android entry point? Well, no, view models actually have their own sort of special annotation. So we don't wanna put the annotation above the class, we actually wanna put it above the constructor and mark this with view model inject. So view model inject and then get that import. So this one is part of the Android X Hilt lifecycle dependency. So this is part of the dependency that we just got at the beginning of this video. So now Hilt knows that, hey, this view model, we are gonna be injecting things into it. Now I actually wanna stop what we're doing here and address a question that somebody asked in my Discord channel. Um, I think it was either late la last night or early this morning. I was sleeping because he's from another part of the world. But anyway, either way, it doesn't matter. Um, he asked a question because he watched the video yesterday and he was a little bit confused. He was trying to set up his project. He was trying to set up his repository so that he could do dependency injection into his repository. And he was like, Mitch, this isn't working. I marked the repository with Android entry point. What's going on? So I realized in the previous video, I didn't clarify something. You don't want to mark everything that you wanna inject things into with Android entry point, you are only marking the sort of Android specific components, services, activities, fragments, stuff like that. Those things you mark with Android entry point if you are injecting dependencies into them. And as, as you just saw, the view model is a another exception. Instead of using Android entry point for the view model, we use view model inject. So fragments, activities, services, stuff like that, you use the Android entry point annotation. View models, you use the special sort of view model inject annotation. And then everything else, repositories, um, doesn't matter. Any, any other class that is not Android specific, you don't need to mark it with Android entry point or view model inject or anything. You just, that is, those will be dependencies. So you declare those in the modules. And we're gonna talk more about that, I believe in the next video. I'll actually just double check. Yeah, in the next video. So in the next video, we're gonna be doing uh, providing a retrofit instance and a repository. So that 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 that's where I'm gonna show you how to do dependency injection into other things like repositories, uh, providing a retrofit service, stuff like that. So hopefully that clears things up. If it doesn't clear things up, it will be clear within the next couple of videos. So don't worry, just follow along. Okay, so our view model is ready to do dependency injection. So now we're gonna do constructor injection into this view model. We're gonna declare a dependency and pass it as a constructor argument. So remember that random string that we created in that module in the previous video? So if we go to DI and we go into our app module, remember we have this, this one dependency here, which is a string and it's being provided through Hilt. So what we wanna do just to kind of test to make sure everything's working is I wanna inject this string into the view model. So previously, remember we were injecting it into the activity. Remember we were injecting it up here and printing it to the log. I deleted those at the beginning of the video, but we were doing that. 
Uh, so now instead I want to do I want to do constructor injection. So we did field injection into the activity. Now we're going to do constructor injection into the fragment. So I'm going to call the init function and just to test to make sure that this is working, I'm going to call print line. Just do uh, you know view model and print out that random string. So I'll just say random string. So that's going to test just to see if our view model is is able to get that dependency. Now the last thing that we're going to do in this video is I want to show you just how easy it is to instantiate view models using this using Hilt and that lifecycle dependency that we added at the beginning of the video. So remember if we go into build.gradle, we added this this dependency down here, this lifecycle view model dependency. This uh, not only gives us this view model inject annotation, but it get, allows us to very easily instantiate fragment or uh, view models inside of our fragments, our activities, whatever. So I can do value view model. This will be a recipe list view model called by view models, view models. And that's it. That will be an instantiation for our view model. Now I know the first question you have is, well, Mitch, will this be the same instance of view model if I say rotate the screen and the fragment is recreated? Yes, it will. So just to test that, let me insert the on create function. Let me just look on create. Where is it? Right there. And I'll just do you know print line and do uh, you know recipe list fragment, and this will then print out the view model instance. So view model. So when I rotate the screen, we expect to see the same address in memory for the view model that it shows. So I'm going to run this and we'll test it to see if we get the same instance of view model when the screen rotates. And also we want to make sure that we see this random string printed to the log. And after we run this, I'm going to show you uh, the other way to instantiate view models with Hilt if you are sharing view models between fragments. So currently right now we're instantiating a view model and this view model is going to be unique to this fragment. But what if you want to share Share view models between fragments. Like if if I wanted to, for whatever reason, share the same view model, the same view model instance between recipe list fragments and recipe fragments. I'm going to show you how to do that after we take a look and see if this is working. Uh, so the logs that I'm looking for is recipe list fragments. That will be the first one. This this line right now, right here, is what we're looking for. So there's the view model instance. You can see the address in memory is. Uh, just just make sure you note what that is now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate my screen So I just rotated and boom there you go You see that the same instance is printed out to the log meaning that the fragment was destroyed and recreated But that same view model that exact same view model is still being used So that's that's what we want to see we want to see the view model persist across configuration changes that way it maintains our data so now what about uh, what about inside of the view model? So let me just copy this string, print this to the log, and boom, there we go. It says, hey, look, a random string. So we know that our dependency, our random string here, is being successfully injected into our view model, and we can see it printed to the log. So now I said earlier that I was going to show you how to share a view model between fragments. So let me uh, let me actually do that. So suppose we want to we want to share recipe list view model between both recipe fragments and recipe list fragment. So you have this other um, sort of instantiation method. You can do activity view models. And what this will do is it will create a whoops, view models. There we go. It will create a view model and it will tie it to the activity that is hosting this fragment. So by doing that, nothing has changed. Everything is going to be exactly the same. But also now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into recipe fragments and I'm going to instantiate that same view model. So I want to be able to navigate to recipe uh, recipe fragment now. And I want to make sure that that same instance is visible. So I'll, I'll run this and bring the app up on the screen. Also, I'll insert the on create function again. So let me just copy the on create function, uh, paste that in here, and we'll see if the view model is the same. I'll change this to recipe fragment. All right, so running the app. Okay, so I just ran the app and I have my real device here. This is Visor, a, a uh, application that mirrors the screen of my phone. And I'm filtering on recipe list fragments and I'm showing Visor up here just so you can see that it is running on my device. So notice the view model here. Notice that, that address in memory. Now the first test we're going to do is I'm going to rotate the screen. Let's make sure that we still get the same instance. Yes, we do. So we know the recipe list fragment was destroyed. It was recreated and we're still getting that exact same instance of the view model. Now I'm going to, I'm going to, 
navigate to recipe fragment and let's see if we get the same instance. So now I'm, I'm in recipe fragment and I'm going to change the filter here to say recipe fragment and boom, there we go. We get the exact same instance of view model. So just to recap, if you want to share a view model between multiple fragments, you use the activity view models way to instantiate. If you want to have a view model that's only tied to one specific fragment. So here I'm going to delete this since we aren't going to be sharing in sharing the view models in this application. You just want to use by view models. So just do by view models instead of activity view model. And that's what we're going to be doing in this project. So that's it. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that cleared things up for you. You know how to do constructor injection into view models, how to uh, instantiate a view model that is unique to a specific fragment, how to share view models between multiple fragments that are tied to a parent activity, um, extra hilt dependency that allows you to do all this stuff very easily. And for those of you who used to use Dagger, who maybe have been following my stuff for a while, you maybe watched my Dagger course, maybe you watched my open API course. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there. Take a second and just appreciate how simple it is to do dependency injection into view models now. Because remember back only six months ago, probably at the most eight months ago, you were doing dependency injection with view models by creating a factory. You had to use map multi-binding, just a very, very complicated, very ugly process. And now it's just so simple. So hopefully you appreciate that. I know I definitely do. And uh, in the next video, what we're going to be doing is uh, building our repository as a dependency. So providing our repository as a dependency with Hilt, providing the retrofit service as a, as a dependency with Hilt, and injecting those things into the view model. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Don't forget your engagement. I almost forgot. Go down there. Hey, Mitch, here's your engagement. Don't forget to leave a like. I noticed you guys are doing way better on the likes now. Since I said something, I believe uh, maybe two videos ago, I said you weren't doing a good job with the likes. You guys are doing a much better job with the likes. So I, I really appreciate that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.